Hi, I'm here with Richard Watts, the leader of Islington Council. We're going to be talking about coronavirus today and the council's effort to fight the virus. Um, how are you? How are you, Richard? I'm all right, thank you. I'm, I'm here at home following the right advice with my wife and my kids who are also both wor working from home and off school as well. So we're getting used to new ways of working. Most say. people say to me that, frankly, it's not before time that this had to happen and, frankly, should probably have happened a bit earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, it's sad that people weren't following the more voluntary advice, but the reality is across London we saw over the weekend ludicrous behaviour of people crowding onto into parks. I heard in other bits of the country people crowding onto beaches. And frankly, restrictions like this were inevitable if people weren't going to follow the advice and take this you know, kind of horrific pandemic seriously. And I think the government had to act. Do you, what, would, what message would you say, would you give to your constituents who might think that they, they don't want to follow the new restrictions or you know, haven't been? Please. Please, please follow the, follow the instructions that the government has given you. They've, they've put in place not just to protect your health, but to protect the, the health of everyone else around you. So even for people who are stupid enough to be cavalier about whether they get this potentially fatal disease, uh, they must think about people around them. You know, the average person with this virus gives it to two and a half other people and even if they're fit and healthy and they're not worried about it themselves stupid as i think that is given that fit, fit and healthy people do get very ill with this at times uh you know think about who else they might pass it on to and to stick to stick to the rules i mean these are the most draconian set of rules that any government has has ever introduced they're actually tighter than a lot of the rules that were introduced during the second world war and I, as a Labour politician, would never thought I'd be in the position of kind of welcoming such a tight you know, crackdown by a right wing Tory government. But the fact that this kind of is beyond any kind of party political consideration is beyond left and right. This is about how we protect our country from the nasty, you know, from the most serious pandemic in, in 100 years. And I just urge everyone to absolutely follow the rules. One of the things about this crisis is that it's local councils are emerging as the fourth emergency service in dealing with people. And the government has been quite clear from the beginning that it, it expected social care to pick up the burden of both treating quite a lot of vulnerable people who weren't that seriously ill, but also to do a massive amount of work to uh, help people out of hospitals who didn't have coronavirus in order to free up hospital beds for you know the incoming tsunami of people who are suffering serious uh, cases of coronavirus you know frankly we've seen 10 years of massive cuts to social care come home to roost at this point given all of the challenges in the social care system but absolutely in Islington the priority will be putting more money and more effort and more resources into social care it's got such a massive job to do mm. at the moment I think it's unfortunate the government has decided to suspend some of the provisions in the care act I think people would I don't think it's necessary I think people would completely understand if things like their annual assessment was a bit delayed because all of the social workers were working on uh, coronavirus related issues and I think it's sending you know kind of unfortunate signals to suspend that that legislation the I think the real challenge is how you keep kind of social care workers who often don't earn as much as people doing equivalent jobs in the NHS at work there's a massive lack of PPE, personal protective equipment in the social care system. Promises have been made, but we've not seen. We've seen very little of that. And councils are scrabbling around to ensure our own carers and adult social care staff have got the protection that they absolutely need. The and so you know, for years and years, social care has been a Cinderella service that has been the first place governments have gone to for cuts. And I think maybe this crisis is teaching us what a short-sighted approach that was, and what a what a critical service it is. But you know, to reassure your readers and now viewers, I think social care 
you know, is, a, is, our, is our top priority at the moment as a council. There's no way we're going to be making kind of foolish cuts to those services at the moment. I'm sure that would be of great comfort um, to your constituents. Um, one of the women who I've been speaking to um, is, is, is bed bound at the moment and cannot leave the house because her carers can't get in. It's a challenge to social care as it is at the moment, how you help people in those situations because of the, the, the nature of coronavirus. And like you said, perhaps the, the lack of PPE gear and so on. Um, so your guarantee of that you won't be cutting social care, I'm sure that'll come as a, as a huge comfort to people. Yeah. The, thing, the thing I would say, though, is that the way in which we deliver some of that social care is going to have to change, not least because we need staff, and if staff are off sick in very large numbers, it will have to change as well. And again, if anyone is worried either about their own situation or about that of a relative or neighbour, please do call us on the We Are Islington number, which is 0207 527 8222. That's 0207 527 8222. Because that, that gets you not just into getting kind of voluntary support, into getting some food and some medicines picked up for, for vulnerable people. It also gets people into our much more kind of higher, higher levels of need adult social care services as well. And so if people are worried, it's far better just to pick up the phone and work with us to try to manage that rather than for people to suffer in silence. Mm. And, and that leads me on to, um, you know, what the council is doing currently to, to tackle coronavirus. Can you give us um, more of an idea about what you're doing specifically? Sure. Coronavirus is now totally dominating the work of the council. We're pretty much stopping all non-coronavirus related work now because given the scale of this national crisis, it would be, you know, kind of crass to carry, you know, it feels crass just to carry on routine business. We simply don't have the resources to do that given the, the demands of the of this pandemic. Uh, so the, the big chunks of work are around carrying on delivering core council services and so making sure we don't see kind of pile-ups of refuse and other things that would contribute to unsanitary conditions in a borough as, as densely populated as Islington. So carrying on core council services is, is really important. Mm -hmm. And just as an aside on that, I just want to pay massive tribute to all of the council staff who still come into work, who are working from home. We've got relatively low levels of sickness compared to other public bodies I read about. And that's just a massive tribute, I think, to the to the dedication and hard work and the good you know good sense of of our workforce. Uh, number two is what we can do to help residents. So that's being rooted through the We Are Islington service, which get which is an incredible team effort from the council, from a whole range of voluntary sector groups, to the new mutual aid groups that have sprung up all across the borough and are fantastic and that that will get people help whether that's accessing food for people, whether it's picking up medicine whether it's helping people with a friendly phone call if they're feeling isolated or more kind of higher needs sophisticated social care services for people in real need as well so please route everything about people through that we are islington phone number and email address and finally we're putting in place now we've finally got the information from governments a package of support for businesses so we are writing off business you know, with government money we are writing off business rates for a whole range of, of businesses there's net we've, we've got some details which should be going up on the council website today or tomorrow about how we can get the council the, the grants out to businesses uh, it's a, an immensely tough time for businesses across our borough and my heart goes out to a lot of people who are you know whose jobs are at risk or who've invested in the business and is now struggling because of this this crisis and so that communications to business is now an urgent priority now to get that out to make sure that businesses are taking sensible decisions to not sack people to try and keep going and understand the the level of support that's out there for them mm -hmm. there I'll, I'll give you some examples of the kind of things we're no longer doing so now and this is partly about public health advice is that all of our libraries have now, we, we love our libraries, but they, they've all now had to close to respect the social distancing law rules. Same about youth clubs, uh, same about our adult day centres. And because it would be incredibly foolish to carry on running day centre services 
uh, for really vulnerable people where where social distancing couldn't be enforced. Uh, and there's a whole range of other kind of more behind the scenes services as well. Uh, but because actually we've, we've got a rate of people coming into work, which is still incredibly impressive across across the council we've had to turn off less than i thought we might have to so we've still got daily street sweeps going on in most places and things like that but the the kind of services that will uh, i think people will see less of is you know things like if it becomes really hard to collect the bins we will move people from things like the daily street sweeps so streets will get swept a few times a week not every day mm. we'll move we'll stop doing some of the kind of big bulky waste collection and a whole range of other kind of services like that the people will see a bit less often one thing i should say is as of yesterday the the household waste recycling center in hornsey street was now closed in order to prioritize kind of getting the the refuse that people collect picked up and sent over to to where it's disposed of in enfield and uh, so that so we are going to see kind of more services i think be delivered more sparsely and a few more turned off as as staff sickness increases but I'd urge people to keep an eye on the council website because the, the coronavirus section of the website is where all of those services will be will be listed. So people will have a very good idea about what public facing stuff isn't happening. Um, what would you say to people? You know, there might be people who feel that their home isn't the right place for them all the time. They, you know, there might be uh, situations of domestic violence in, in particular. What would you say to people who who don't feel like their home is safe? Um, but they're being told to stay there. Is, there. is there any advice that you can offer them? I, uh, I am really worried about seeing an increase in domestic violence, which we know is already a big issue in, in Islington. The council has just invested a lot of new money in trying to support victims of, of domestic violence. And the, I think the advice I would say is, if you can find a safe way of doing it, please tell us and there will still be services there to help. So in understanding that we are likely to see an increase in domestic violence as families are trapped together, often, as you say, in really small flats, there's two, thousands of families in Islington who are desperately overcrowded. And, uh, for, you know, and so for people facing that kind of risk of domestic violence, please find a safe way of telling us and when there are still services there that can help people yeah. because, you know, we've protected those services because we think they're so important. But for families in kind of, you know, without that kind of imminent threat of, of violence, but who are still finding it, they're, they're cramped up in a over overcrowded and kind of often then damp flat, I'd say, you know, you are allowed, you know, follow the government's rules, but you are allowed out for daily exercises as a family group. We are trying our best, as long as people behave responsibly, to keep our parks open exactly for families in that position. So you can go out and do some exercise and get some fresh air and without breaking the rules. And I just urge people to, you know, be sensible, you know, to keep two, two metres apart from people who aren't in their immediate family group but then to, you know, and, and to follow, follow the rules, but, you know, to try to make sure that they can at least get a bit of fresh air each day as, as, as is allowed. And because it does make, you know, I'm finding myself, it does make an awful, awful amount of difference to mm -hmm. your, your sense of well-being. Yes, absolutely. I would just say to people, the government's instructions are there for a reason. Please follow them. Uh, so, you know, stay at home support the nhs save lives is a really important message and i'd ask people to follow those rules uh, but also just to keep an eye out for the vulnerable in our community as well to get them in contact with we are islington on 0207 527 and to ensure that you know we get through this in as good way as possible you know we have no you know this is only this disease isn't even three months old yet internationally we have no idea is the truth of it how this pandemic plays out and how long it's going to go on for and how bad it's going to get and so and it does feel a bit like we're only in the foothills of it at the moment it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better so please everyone look after look out for each other and do the right thing follow the rules and we'll get through this thank you richard thanks thank so you very much indeed and thanks thanks to the tribune for his great work